Hello everyone. Haters who keep saying, come on Putin, do your job. I hope you're very happy because people in Ukraine continue to die. There's been an attack um, against the city of Nikopol uh, during the heavy shelling. At least one woman was killed. Ukrainian troops left two more villages uh, in the same area as Avdiivka. But at least they made it expensive for Russians and down two more Russian warplanes. The villages in question are Stepovoy and Severne. You can pull up the map and see, you know, how how big of an area it is. It's not a huge area, but, get, but again, any loss is a loss. It's been predicted so many times at this point that... Any occupied territory is going to cost Russia numerous lives, equipment, buildings, and so on and so forth. And here is yet another example. Russia's own historians and political scientists are already warning that Russia does not really want to hold on to Ukraine because no matter what happens, there's going to be massive underground efforts same thing that happened in the occupied territories during world war ii and all of the underground organizations all of the people who were involved in that basically organized wherever they were without any indication from their government and carried out whatever they could to fight the invaders in a lot of ways the world owes them much of the victory in World War II, because without their effort, because without the information they gathered, success of certain crucial operations, such as the D-Day, for example, would have been very much in question. Meanwhile, everybody continues losing their shit over Macron's suggestion uh, to introduce NATO troops into Ukraine. And I guess my question is, why not? He has a point. And I'm glad at least he has the balls to be discussing this. Listen. Basically, unless Ukraine gets massive amounts of help with both money and ammunition, things they could put to work right now, NATO will end up engaging Russia anyway. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So, we could do this two ways. We could throw Ukraine under the bus and see if they can duke it out and hope nothing bad happens, but it will. Or, we can send not just the assistance, but also additional troops now. Minimize loss of life shove Russia out of Ukraine, teach them a lesson because they're bullies and that's the only language they understand, and be done with it. Of course, of course, in response to Macron's remarks, Russia immediately started issuing threats, blah, blah, blah. Question, what are they going to do? If the world basically did the same thing as they did during World War II and got its shit together and moved together, presented a united front. What will Russia do? Again, it surprises me that so many European countries have forgotten their history. Because here's the thing. So a lot of people say, but Russia has nukes. <laughs> Like so many terrorist nations, uh, Russian government running their country and constantly engaging in the nuke threats is a coward. It's a bunch of cowards. First of all, there is a question as to the, whether the, that equipment even works because there have been numerous acts of sabotage and just plain old-fashioned theft from all layers of Russia's military pyramid. Okay? So there's a question whether those things still work. Second, Russia's military leaders, much as they're scared of Putin, 
understand that they fire, we fire. Okay? And while European and U.S. technology is advanced enough to intercept Russia's missiles, based on Russia's very own recent experience, firing in the wrong directions, dropping shit on their own cities, they're not so sure whether they have the technology to intercept European and U.S. missiles. So, the nuclear threat is tremendously overblown. So, mostly, all of Russia's statements, ooh, don't you dare, NATO, don't you dare, it's just posturing. It's nothing but a typical bully's posturing. Oh, look who else has spoken up. Oh my goodness, the Vatican, so well known for its resistance to the invading army. Oh, wait a minute. No, they aren't. So, to get this into perspective, everybody go and read the history of Vatican's politics during World War II. So, this comes as absolutely no surprise to me. They want to negotiate with the terrorist nation. They want to negotiate with the invader. Just like during World War II, as long as they are safe, as long as all of their um, valuables are safe and accounted for, they don't want to get involved and, you know, they're making these, you know, highly ineffective, inane statements just, just to stay out of trouble. No surprise there. So has anything good actually happened? Well, I wouldn't call it good, but at least it's some kind of progress. First of all, um, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen uh, reminded the world leaders that we have all of those Russian assets frozen. Let's just direct them to Ukraine. Come on. And I'm glad she remembers this, and I'm glad she is out there reminding the rest of the world that this is something that can be done. This is already there. This is the money that is not going to affect the taxpayers. This is not going to affect anybody's economy. This is not going to affect anybody else's pocket. The money used to belong to Russia. It got frozen as part of the sanctions against Russia. Let's put it to good use. If you want Ukraine to continue duking it out for you, then walk the walk. And then there is this, uh, so the uh, PBS documentary about Ukrainian city of Mariupol is being screened by the State Department. I think it's a good thing. I think personally it should be screened uh, on the House of Representative floor and make watching it mandatory because I think People who are making decisions about whether or not to provide aid to Ukraine should see with their own eyes what is happening in Ukraine. Since they're too chicken to actually go to Ukraine, let Ukraine come to them in this documentary.